Hey guys, Mike with Long Range with the Lilies here at MDT headquarters in Chilliwack, Canada. Uh, I'm here with Josh Botha, one of the project design engineers or pretend engineer as you like to be referred to. Uh, here to talk to you about an exciting new product that's coming out. So for the past four years, I want to say, I've been using this MDT ACC. Mm -hmm. It's become a, a staple in the precision rifle world, yep. um, known for its modularity and its customizability. Um, but what we're going to here to talk to you guys about today is the new MPT ACC Elite. Yes, sir. So this has been kind of a, a project that's been going for a little while based off of the feedback um, that you've been getting mostly from the shooting team as well as yourself and some of the other engineers. And that's one of the things that I love about MBT is you're all shooters. Too. Yep. <laughs> it's one of the things that's encouraged. Um, for those of you that don't know, MBT actually gives an ammo allotment uh, to all their employees in order to encourage them to shoot. So if, you, if you're looking to apply, factor <laughs> that into your calculus. So do you want to tell us about your baby? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So as Mike said, um, we have had the ACC available for quite a, quite a while now, which will now be known as the ACC Premier. We're not actually going to discontinue it because we love the chassis and it's become such a staple in the industry sure. and it's brought so many people into our brand, which is awesome. Um, but we're making some updates. Um, so as you said again, uh, based off of the feedback from the shooters, uh, customers, the whole team internally, we know there's some things we wanted to update. And it's not saying necessarily that the Premier is a bad product, but there's some cool stuff we can do to it. Right? Yeah. So some things we can upgrade, some things we can move, we can, we can change. So um, I find the easiest way to describe the chassis is just front to back and we can run through a bunch of the new features. Sure. Um, between the two of them, we've got about 20 new features that have changed either a little tiny bit or a whole bunch. Um, so, all the way to the tip of the forend, you can see up here, we got a whole new aesthetic on the forend. Um, we've changed up the look a little bit, we've added QDs up to the very tip here. And the biggest thing is, and one of the things that shooters are really picking up on, is the fact that the forend itself is so much thicker and so much beefier. So the chassis, when you pick it up, the first thing is like, whoa, okay, this thing, it, it, it feels different. It feels more solid and more rigid. It's, uh, it's hard to quantify kind exactly. of how it feels, but it just feels more solid, I guess, is a better word for it. Exactly. So the forend itself, um, you know, really thick, really, really strong, very rigid, even without weights in it, there's a lot of extra torsional and bending resistance. Um, and that's one of the things that translates into the shootability, just gives it a complete different feel in a recoil. The nice thing about that though, is we've designed it so that all the exterior weights, all the interior weights remain the same. Mm -hmm. um, and we are also gonna be releasing a one piece weight here really soon that'll drop in and it'll fit both the Premier and the Elite and nice. be backwards compatible. Use the same screws. We've kept that all the same so you guys don't have to go out and buy a whole new set of weights. That's awesome. Moving back from there, we've got a whole bunch of Swiss cheese holes along top of the forend here. So we've added a couple different options for people who want to run an NV bridge or if you want to run what we're calling the Ergo bridge. Um, basically anything that caps over top of your forend, it doesn't fully conceal it, you can pop it off easy. Um, if you want to switch out your barreled action or something like that, but it gives you the option to add forend accessories on here. And they're stackable as well, I unfortunately don't have any on me. Sure. Um, but they bolt right on top of the chassis here you are able to reach up and grab over top of your barrel without having to grab onto the actual hot barrel um, or influence your point of impact at all or anything like that. And a, they will bolt on, stack up all along here. You can usually stack three or four of them wherever you need them. Um, and basically, you know, give yourself more options on your forehand, right? Sure. Um, the NV bridge is not canted, so it is at a zero MOA, but unlike a lot of the other NV bridges we've tried in the past, it is set to the correct height, meaning it's much, much lower down to the bore center line, such that you don't have to run extremely tall scope rings to actually get an NV clip on optic on that. Right, so that's, a, that's super important for those guys that are running NV optics or thermals. And um, there's an entirely growing market of predator hunters that are really, you know, scooping this stuff up. And if they don't have to change out what they're using for competition, they can just go in and slap it right on top. That's, that's a huge bonus. Before we move past the forend, I just wanted to show kind of the difference in thickness between these two. Mm -hmm. um, you can really see the difference in material width between this one and this one when you compare them side to side. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. It is a it is a pretty big uh, significant increase, and we've also kept some of the things that we kept or we introduced on the Gen One. So M lock all along the sides. 
The underside is very similar, but we've actually removed M-Lock where we didn't find it necessary. So almost no one ran any M-Lock accessory at the back here. Yeah. We just took it out. It sure. wasn't doing anything, so why keep it, right? Um, but for you guys who are still mounting dedicated bipods uh, like an Atlas or a ground pod or something like that onto a Picatinny, you can still slap your rail on the, top, on the tip here and off you go. Mm -hmm. um, M-Lock, or sorry, uh, the RRS dovetail, uh, which we do check to the RS dovetail specs. We have gauges and we do ensure that it will clamp right into something like a, a RS ARC clamp um, or some of the other clamps we'll be offering pretty soon here. Um, and we've also integrated the R lock spec all along the bottom. Nice. So it's one of the new features that's kind of coming out from RRS. So all these little tiny holes you see all along the bottom are designed to basically index your bipod or your tripod. And if you're shooting something with really heavy recoil and you don't want your gun to be sliding around in a recoil, which they can do. These help just lock everything in place. So it's a really super handy feature. Yeah, you won't have grip tape on there. That's kind of a custom uh, demo model edition. Yes. But, um, and then, so you still compatible with all your RRS adaptable bipods, especially like the SkyPod is what everybody's typically using for, for MDT products. Yep. Um, okay, sorry, continue. No, all good. Um, another thing we should actually mention before you get too far, this is definitely a prototype. Yeah. There's a lot of goofiness going on in this thing. Sure. Um, and it has been run, so it's got a bit of dust on it. but. Yeah, so moving back from the foreign there, everything else staying pretty much the same, keeping the accessory holes on the side, which is another thing we introduced in the ACC for your data card holders, your whatever the heck, spare round holders, anything you want to mount on there pretty much that you don't want on the tip of your foreign. The bedding system, we've kept everything basically the same in the center here. It's a proven system and it works. There's no real need to bed these chassis. We've uh, optimized the V-block over the life of the ACC and then incorporated that into the Gen 2. So really excited to have that kind of just keeping going there. Again, no real need to change it. The barricade stop on these things has got taller and more vertical, um, allowing shooters to just run their bag or run their chassis right up into their bag or prop or whatever they're gonna be running it on. It's also very aggressive on the front here, just like the, the first gen. So aesthetically, looks pretty similar. Uh, functionally, basically works the same, but it gives you even more bite on stuff. And it protects your magazine a little bit. If you're pushing into it, you're not gonna cant your magazine and uh, induce feeding problems as you're pushing into the barricade and that's why this is lengthened. And while we're on the topic of magazines. Great segue. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, you wanna talk about it? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So I'll flip it around here. We've actually changed this up since SHOT Show, which is the last time we talked about this chassis. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've integrated a different Magwell Collet uh, system, which we've now changed to a CAM system. So we actually had the barricade stop sitting a lot further forward, almost dropped in. Uh, barricade stopped sitting a lot further forward and we had a whole uh, collet system that slid back and forth in there which controlled the overall length of your magwell. The reason that's important is that if your magwell is too tight, obviously it's going to be hard to get a mag in and out. Sure. If it's too loose, your mag can actually dip and the whole front of your round can dip down. So basically it induces the same feeding issues as if you like ram, ram your uh, gun into your bag too hard, right? So by having a control system here in the front, we're able to precisely control your mag and keep your round level or pointing up ideally. So you can essentially tune the chassis to be able to interface with whatever magazine you're using, exactly. whether it's MBT made or AICS, any, any pattern magazine, and you can 100%. actually tune it and optimize it to where it grips that magazine as perfect as you want it to grip, which I think is an awesome feature. Will still only be AICS compatible. Though. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> No M14 or AR mags in this, unfortunately. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but the idea is absolutely, you can tune it to the overall length of your mag. So it's not uncommon for mags to be slightly out of specs, slightly longer, slightly shorter. Um, but the important fact here is we've moved that barricade stop back because we realized that the barricade stop further forward was just not ergonomic to shoot and functionally it was worse. So right. we've actually returned it back to where we, where we wanted it. And we've made this really compact, really sleek little system that you adjust here with a, it'll actually be a hex key on the side. Right now it's a flathead. And there's just another hex key on the top here. You lock it down and that thing is solid. And that was all feedback. I know I had the demo with the magwell that was further forward and it, what I felt like it did was it moved the balance point a little further back. And it also forced me to reach further with the Absolutely. bag. And it's one of the things that I love about the way you guys do business is all this is based on feedback from some of the elite shooters out there. Um, guys that are far better than me, Francis Cologne, John Pinch, Keith Baker, they've all had their, their hand in this design and, and making little tweaks to it. And I think it's what you're getting as an end result is really amazing. So I'm sorry, continue. No, it's all good. And, then, and you're right. I mean, that's really, you know, we keep saying this, but we're trying to build the, the Ferrari of chassis. We're trying right. to build the pinnacle and, and really no expense to spare, right? How do we make the best competition chassis? Yeah, and I think that's a perfect segue to talk about 
the difference between an ACC Premier or what you know we've been referring to as a Gen 1 up until this point, and this is, it's not replacing the Gen 1. It is what basically they turned the engineers and the design team loose and said, make the absolute best. So it is gonna be more expensive, but there is a performance increase and there's kind of a, a no expense spared attitude with this one. Let's just make the best thing that we can yeah. and then it'll just exist at a different price point from what is already a great product in the Gen 1. And I mean, if you look at it, an earlier revision of the chassis, like the ones you would have got and this one, you'll see that there are some changes and we tried a bunch of stuff and we're like, oh, no, that wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> so hold on, let's just take that back, right? And, right. and you know, we've gone through and we've modified and upgraded. Um, the maglatch, I mean, kind of the next feature back here is kind of a, a good example of that where this is actually one that we will be replacing. Um, functionally, it basically works the same as everything we've showed up until now. But there are some issues with this, again, through trial and error we found through the team, right. um, where we know that we have a concept there, functionally it's just not doing what we want it to do. But the really cool thing uh, about this concept here is it's uh, vertically adjust. So where the cam in the front adjusts your overall horizontal length, mm -hmm. the vertical adjustment on your mag latch height can be adjusted through this uh, latch in the back which is extremely useful for three log actions mm -hmm. and more importantly 22s. So if you've got a Voodoo, if you've got a Rimax, you've got something like that that feeds out of an AICS pattern 22 mag, adjusting your mag latch height is paramount. Okay. So that's one of the things we were really excited about. It's uh, plus one and a half millimeters or about 60 thou and down two and a half millimeters and that's uh, 80, 90 thou. I appreciate you translating Canadian and American there. I It'll be bilingual, my friend. <laughs> so, We've got the uh, ambidextrous mag latch. It'll look and feel and function just like our normal one, but it gives you all that cool adjustment in the middle there. Um, everything else in the middle of the body is pretty much the same, but then, well, actually, I guess I can also mention that the whole center section here also got thicker. Mm -hmm. Basically, anywhere where we could thicken up the chassis, we did. Yep. We just said, okay, well, like, how do we reduce vibration? How do we re reduce that tingy noise? How do we increase rigidity? And, it, you know, the byproduct of all of this is it increases your accuracy and it changes the way the chassis feels. So, coming back to the next step, um, we've got these thumb shelves on the side. Again, this is a prototype one, 3D printed, but we do have a little M-lock slot. You can kind of see it on this side here. Mm -hmm. A little M-lock slot. It is actually M-lock compatible, so if you wanted to mount an M-lock accessory there, sure. I don't know what that would be. Um, you could, but we've got the thumb shelves in here, but the nice thing about it being a slot is that you can adjust your thumb shelf back and forth, rotate it, and you can set up on either side, and I believe we're actually shipping with Ambi as well, so nice. you have left side, right side. Um, or if you wanted to remove it and add whatever the heck, a timer or something, you could throw it in there as well, level, who knows. Um, then we kind of get into like the meat and potatoes of what the big changes are. So the foreign's been a really, really big change, but the other huge change for us has been this whole bus stock system. And this is really what drove a lot of the development on this chassis. So again, sticking with the theme of adding rigidity everywhere, you can see now the butt stock goes all the way straight back and translates the recoil like as direct into the shooter's shoulder as you can. Yeah, so if we compare the differences here where the material comes down exactly. and, and then back up, now it's transferring that recoil more in a straight direct line. Exactly, so okay. that straight, straight direct line and we've also added this extra connection point from the bottom of your grip all the way up through your buttstock, which is completely modular. You can remove it if you don't want it. Um, some people hate the aesthetics of it. Some people just don't like having this bar in here. Um, so it's completely up to you. If you do not want that and you just want to run a standard Elite grip or a Premier grip or whatever, just pop this off um, and you don't, you don't need to run it. So, but yeah. we're finding it does help transfer the recoil in a more solid feel as opposed to having a hinge exactly. point here now the recoil is moving kind of as one unit. Exactly, so we actually did quite a lot of uh, FEA testing and solid works based testing just to see the stress if we applied a thousand pounds of force on the back here, which is an extreme amount of force, what would happen to the buttstock? And what we found with the old buttstock is that under extreme conditions, it would flex in a much different way than this would. And what that does is it translates to the shooter for additional accuracy, okay. right? So by connecting everything in here all the way through and giving it that extra rigidity, you're getting improved performance, less vibration, and increased rigidity. And the end goal here is more accurate, right? More, more accurate, accurate right. shot and more repeatable, right? So as you guys have seen going through the buttstock here, this one's got the, uh, the prototype jellies installed. Right. So the little squishy guys in here, we are gonna be injection molding these um, and releasing them with the chassis or right around the same time. Sure. Probably won't ship with them, but it is an optional uh, accessory. And again, it reduces the vibration, reduces some of that felt recoil. So right? I get a lot of question on the jellies and 
they're like, well, what does it do for you? And the, yeah. the best thing I can it looks cool, explain, Mike. one, it looks cool, <laughs> but two, when you break the shot, and especially if you, you know, use the trigger cam, it's the only way I can articulate it to people, your image vibrates a mm -hmm. little bit and then it stabilizes mm -hmm. and it gets clear. With the jellies installed, it just seems to go clear quicker. You, it seems like you recover your sight picture, your reticle becomes crisp and clear again faster yeah. because it does mitigate some of that vibration. I don't want to use the word absorb because I don't think that's the right engineering term, but yeah. it helps mitigate some of that vibration and that harmonic like tuning fork effect that you yep. used to get. So it, it basically, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an expert in vibration, but essentially what it's doing is just redirecting. It's all just energy, right? Mm -hmm. It's being transferred into your system and it has to escape somewhere. So it's either gonna escape by your, your cheek riser doing a whole bunch of back and forth wiggling, it's gonna escape by your butt, butt pad here doing a whole bunch of back and forth wiggling, or we take a bunch of that energy that's that's transferred through your whole system here in your buttstock and dissipate it out as sound and as energy and as heat. Sure. Right? And it's minor, it's tiny amounts, but just doing this alone, the vibration numbers we have when we release the jellies uh, on the website, we're gonna do a whole release video on them, it's pretty amazing how much they do. Yeah. So, really excited about those the pockets here. These will be specific to this chassis, so you won't be able to mix and match, unfortunately, um, which you also won't be able to do on the other ones, but we right. do have the specific ones for this chassis. Um, and then everything else on here is toolless. So, I mean, of course, you're gonna need a tool to adjust your grip back and forth and your accessories, but for your cheek riser, your length of pull, your butt pad height, all of that is toolless. So all the adjustments you would make in the field and on the fly, it's toolless. Yeah, so, funny story. As, we found uh, as I just found out, um, I've been turning this wheel and then kind of like forcing this open. And what you can do for those of you at home is you can just push the button and slide it like this, like it's supposed to be, yes. instead of gorillaing it and looking like kind of an idiot in front of the engineers. But <laughs> pro tip, uh, yeah, so that works better. Yes, a little <laughs> bit. So uh, exactly, so we've got these knobs in here. Um, they're just a fairly small diameter knurled steel knob here. Um, clamped down super, super tight. So. The cheek riser, you got all the adjustment you would see on a normal cheek riser. We've also got a little bit of back and forth. Um, and the butt stock, or the, the length of pull on the butt pad, we've really tried to optimize it. And um, instead of having two lengths of butt pad, a short and a long like we currently do, mm -hmm. we've actually shrunk everything down. So our minimum length of pull currently is 12 inches. That's our, super short, yeah. Super short. So for little guys, or for people, little, guy, little people, sorry. Shouldn't Ian. say guys. I mean, Ian. <laughs> we weren't gonna say Ian, but we're gonna, call we're gonna say Ian. All right. Um, they can run it all the way in. They can collapse it all the way down. 12 inch length of pull is tiny. Or for yeah. people who really, really want to get super close up on their gun, they're running a cantilever mount, they're running a short eye relief scope, whatever it is. Um, but with the standard length of pull, you go from 12, uh, 12 inches to 13 and three quarters. And we also have a one inch length of pull spacer. So 12 inches to 14 and three quarters, unless you're a freaking giraffe, like it's going to fit you. Right. right. It's going to pretty much cover everything. Um, so we've got a huge adjustment length of pull. Again, everything is toolless unless you're getting to the one, one inch length of pull spacer, but it's a really quick one tool install. Cheek riser is all toolless, and you've still got all the left and right adjustment, your cant adjustment um, on your butt pad, on your cheek riser. You, you haven't got cant adjustment anymore, unfortunately, but it's a very narrow, very small cheek riser profile, so you, there's no real need to adjust it. There's no real need that we feel to adjust it, cant it, um, and do some of the adjustments you would do on our older cheek risers, because we've optimized this for uh, weak side, strong side shooting, you know, transitioning back and forth, and it'll also be foam covered. Right. So I think we've thrown a lot of good, like, engineering terms out there, and uh, people will go like, okay, Mike, the, the, what's the so what of it? So my impression, I've shot um, the prototypes and, and this one here a little bit, is it feels more solid, for lack of a better way to put it. I feel like there's less harmonic vibration mm -hmm. in this chassis versus the old chassis. And some of the shooters are reporting um, a very like significant accuracy increase if you're talking about group size as a measure of weighing it. Yeah. Um, Francis Cologne has some numbers and I don't wanna misquote them so I don't wanna put them out there. But he is such an analytical data-driven guy sure. and he's shot hundreds and hundreds of groups. And he is saying without a doubt that this is a more accurate chassis yeah. than, the, uh, than the, uh, the previous one. So, Again, the Elite exists at a level above the ACC Gen 1 or the ACC Premier as it's now being renamed. Yep. And this is kind of your pinnacle. This is your flagship model. Yep. This one is still great. It still does great things. It's won a lot of matches. Um, but now we're getting in 
just at a little bit higher uh, level with this. So the well, question everybody's going to ask me, when do we expect to see it open for release? Our projected current release date is September. September of 22. 22. Okay. Um, I'm working as hard as I freaking can to get it out quicker. Okay. Um, because we got a lot of people asking us the same question. And yeah. I can't wait to have them out there and again, winning matches. Um, and one of the things that's really critical on this chassis is that we're doing a lot of things that no one's ever done. For sure. Which is what we love to do. Yeah. I and mean, as engineers, I'm always looking to do that, right? But we've done a lot of features and we've, sorry, we've, we've implemented a lot of features and we've done a lot of um, design on this that no one's thought to do or no one's tried to do and no one's explore these different boundaries. And this is the really cool thing about the pro shooter team, right? Is that you guys will say, hey, have you guys tried this, right? And we're like, no, why would we do that? And we try and we're like, oh, this works great. And we've got all kinds of different things we're working on ergonomically, functionally, um, just overall on a lot of these products that are not necessarily specific to this chassis that we're just trying to develop and we're trying the new things, right? And again, it's trial and error, right? Not sure. all will stick, but yeah, aiming for that September, September date right now is what we're going for. Um, Probably aiming for about the $1,600, $1,700 MSRP okay. range right now on these guys. They should be launching black FDE and this kind of cool titanium uh, blue is what we're aiming for. And accessories that will come with it, kind of TBD. But okay. as I said, a lot of it's backwards compatible. So yeah, so all the weights and everything else, if you already own a Gen 1, you can just use those and transfer it over. Yep. Um, Josh, I really appreciate you taking time. We're here at the MDT factory. So if you hear background noise, that's what's going on. They're hard at work tuning stuff out just as fast as they can. I know the demand right now for everything is just yeah. through the roof. Um, and I'm looking forward to taking this out next week at the uh, NRL Championship. That's your one right now. All right, well hopefully I can be the first one to win a match with this thing. We'll see. Okay. I think there's some people out there that might have a vote in that. <laughs> but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming by. Yeah.